Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to say good morning this morning and let you guys know that today is Thursday and generally I would be going to a food bank, but I'm struggling this morning. So pushing myself to go up and down the stairs with bags of groceries is something I don't want to do this morning, but that doesn't mean that I sit around and do nothing, okay? So we're gonna get in the kitchen and we're gonna do some things. I'm enjoying my coffee. Um, yesterday I spent the day um, working with Spice and getting him shaved down. He's having some issues and so he has an appointment next week to go see the vet. I was gonna send him in to have his you know, shampooed, get him groomed and stuff. But when I went to make the appointment, I realized it was going to cost me $50. And I'm like, I can do that way cheaper myself, okay? So, I spent the day grooming Spice. So, I'm going to turn this camera around. I'm going to let you see what I did. I wanted y'all to see that I did shave him down. All right. And he has a bald spot on his back. But, um... That's why he's going into the vet, okay? So, come on over here, Spice. Come on. Come here. Come here, baby. So I wanted y'all to see. See this? Okay? We're going to get it treated, all right? And find out what's going on with him. His skin is very itchy. And he does suffer from seasonal allergies. And this is the time of year when that happens. And so I did get him shaved down, making sure it's not uh, heat related, all right? And so we're going to go into the vet and we're going to see. So you can see how much hair was on him. Okay. <laughs> he has very thick fur. Okay. You, you saw him. He was, in fact, scratching. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm outside. Um, after my morning conversation with you guys, um, I am having my second cup of coffee. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm struggling today, okay? Like I showed you, uh, Spice has been shaved down. And while I was shaving Spice down, um, what I didn't realize is that on my porch, I had a suspicion a few days ago and I had someone check and they didn't see it. Okay. But I had a yellow jacket nest up underneath the railing of my porch and I disturbed it. <laughs> and when I did, I grabbed Spice and tossed him into the house, and in the process, I got stung, okay? <laughs> he didn't get stung, but I did. <laughs> so that's why I'm struggling. I'm not allergic, all right? But it does make me feel wonky for a few days whenever you get hit by, you know, yellow jackets, okay? Not one, but two, okay? <laughs> um, it makes you feel kind of like you want to... It makes me, anyway, makes me feel like I, I just want to sleep it off, okay? I am fine, all right? I will be fine. This is not the first time this has happened. Uh, I am 62. I'll be 62 tomorrow. And um, so it's not the first time that it's happened, okay? But it does make me feel a little tired for a day or two, okay? And I'm not sure if it's the sting itself or if it's just the shock of the stings okay <laughs> that um the adrenaline rush that makes me exhausted okay but i'll be back in the swing of things next week okay i've just decided you know tomorrow's my birthday just take it easy over the weekend enjoy your sabbatical for yourself okay it is your birthday okay <laughs> and I'm even going to I'm gonna treat myself a little bit 
thanks to you guys all right and um and a couple of apps on my phone and i'm gonna do a little takeout for myself for my birthday weekend all right so y'all stay tuned because i am going to get some filming done for my birthday and celebrate my birthday um and film it okay but I'm not going to do all of the, you know, watching it, editing it, um, getting it up, getting all of the things that need to happen in the background, and then watch it over one more time before it goes out to you guys. I'm not going to do all that, all right? I'll wait until Monday to get all that done, all right? So, today I am filming, all right? And I am going to do things in the house. I'm just not going to push myself, okay? I still have vegetables left over from two weeks ago. And so one of the dishes that I want to do today is I want to take the turnips that I got and I want to make turnip au gratin instead of potato au gratin. I came across a recipe for turnip au gratin. And remember, I have all that ham in the freezer. And so I took out a package of the ham, the cubed ham. And so we're going to have ham and turnip au gratin. I have all this stuff to do it, okay? And I'm going to loosely follow the recipe that I came across. You know me. I... I don't follow a complete recipe. I look and see what I can substitute with things that I have in the house, okay? And I didn't grow up eating turnips, believe it or not, okay? That's one vegetable that we did not eat growing up. <laughs> My mom refused to plant them. Her go-to, you know, the, people eat turnip greens here in the south, okay? And Which is the greens off of the turnip, all right? But her go-to for greens was spinach. She planted spinach and cabbage. And so, and lettuce. I take that back. She did lettuce, spinach, and cabbage. And that was her go-to greens. She did not mess with turnip greens, mustard greens, and all those. If she wanted a mess of greens, it was either spinach or, or cabbage. Okay. So... Anyway, anyway, she didn't like them. She didn't like mustard greens or turnip greens. Now, I have tried in my adult life both mustard and turnip greens, and I have to say I inherited that from her. I don't like either one of those. I do like spinach, and I do like cabbage, okay? But mustard and turnip greens, even cooked up right, okay? Like, you have to have a cooked up right, okay, for the good southern... Uh, swing to it. I have gone to some of the best restaurants in my area. You know, slap your mama southern cooking, all right, and tried their turnip and mustard greens, and there's something about them, okay? <laughs> I can't get past the flavor in it, all right? But anyway, so I want to let you know that even though I'm not 100% up to par today, like ready to go out and face the world and get those bags up and down the steps and all that stuff, even though I'm not that, you know, to that level, um, I am getting things done in the house, okay? Tomorrow is my last doctor's appointment with the eye doctor. I'm excited about that. And so I will have a video out on the results of my doctor's appointment, okay, tomorrow, okay? Okay, oh. I know my my deck is a hot mess. I still got garden soil. I'm waiting for the doctor to give me the okay to get my hands into this garden soil. So I can take care of it. But I wanted you to see Spice. He has discovered a little inchworm that is on a bag and he saw it move okay and so I uh, once he started barking the inchworm stopped moving and is hidden I don't know if you can see it 
but it is right there. And now he can't see it because it stopped moving. But he's looking for it. He can smell it. Oh, he saw it move. He's so cute when he does this. <laughs> He's so cute. This will entertain him for a good 15 20 minutes. It's been about five minutes, and he's still very entertained with this. And I'm going to show you where it's at. <laughs> he keeps seeing it. There it is, right there. It's very camouflage. Hey everyone, I'm bringing you in to let you know that I am getting ready to take care of some of this produce that I had left over from a food bank haul two weeks ago. And so we need to get this um, processed. First thing I'm gonna do is the jalapenos. I know that they are looking a little um, on the wrinkled side, but that's okay, they're still good. They're not moldy, they're not bad. So what I'm going to do is I have a freezer bag here and we're going to cut the tips off of them and throw them in the bag. And what I'm going to do is just throw them in the freezer to keep them from going bad. And then when I get ready to make my salsa, I have these jalapenos ready to go in. Okay, the salsa. There we go. That's it. That's a real simple and easy task that I can do on this day that I'm not feeling up to complete par, but I got this done. So I'm going to take these and toss them in the freezer and I'll come. And then I'll be right back. Let me toss these in the freezer right behind you guys. And that's ready for my salsa. The next thing I'm going to do is pull out the bag of frozen onions that I have because I'm going to add to the onions, okay? I took all this out of my refrigerator yesterday as a reminder today that this is what I wanted to get done. And so I'm going to reach over you and get a small chopping board and bring in my chopper here and put it together, assemble it. There we go. It's ready to go. And yep, it's ready to go. And we're going to get these onions ready to be chopped. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I have the trash can right underneath you guys and I'm going to top the tops. Off of these. Do this. Peel them. 
get them ready to go in the chopper. Okay. These are very strong and powerful onions. And so give me a minute. I'm going to get a glass container out. Not a plastic one, but a glass one. And the reason I'm using a glass one is because it's, being, it's not going to pick up the, the scent of the onions. Because these are very strong onions. Oh, I'm having trouble behind you. Give me a minute. Okay. Basically what I'm going to do is toss these onions into this glass container right here. Just like this. I'm gonna, I am going to cut them in half. They'll fit in the chopper better. <clears throat> and get these all prepared to go into the chopper. Once I get these all prepared to go in the chopper, I'll bring you back. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all of these onions. And I'm gonna set them inside my chopper and see how quickly I can chop all these up. And this is the fine chop. Just like this. I'm going to chop all these onions up and they will go into my frozen bag of onions. So I'll get these done and I'll bring you back. All right, everyone, I have filled the chopper up and I'm not even done yet. So I'm pulling out this frozen bag of onions and it's double bagged so that the smell doesn't like overpower my freezer. And I'm going to dump these into that inner bag. Okay. And I'm going to keep chopping. We're gonna put this back together just like this. There we go. And we just keep going. Just like this. This is probably one of the best buys that I ever made for chopping onions. Um, I also make french fries using this, okay? Because I use the larger chopper. And there we go. We have completely chopped all those onions up in a matter of minutes. These are going into this bag. And yes, I'm gonna fit that, I'm gonna fit it all in there. I am. And now, my bag is back full. Remember, these were the onions that came from the food, the food bank haul. You may ask, what do you do with all those onions? Well, I like to keep these things chopped up in my freezer because there are times when I get things from the food bank that I need to get used up or canned up, and I use the onions as ingredients to make soups and stews and things that I can can up and put on the shelf for my future self. I do it all the time. And so... Yeah, so all of this now is going to go into the dishwasher. Those onions are going into the freezer. I've had people tell me in the comments, which is a great idea, 
that they lay it out and freeze it and then um, and then put it in bags I don't do that and the reason is because there is so much onions that I process <laughs> on any given week that um, it would just be extra steps that I would have to take and so I use the hammer method that's my choice all right, now that I got the onions put into the freezer, I'm gonna bring you guys in. And what I'm gonna do is, I am going to peel the turnips that I got from the food bank, just like you would potatoes. And when I get done with this, I'm gonna bring you back, okay? I'm gonna peel all the turnips up. And I'm bringing you guys in to let you see what I'm doing. I have the turnips all ready to go into the slicer. And what I'm going to do is put the turnips down in there. Okay. And we're going to stack them up like this in there and slice them up. I'm hoping that these are gonna slice them pretty evenly and thin. That's what I'm hoping. some wedged in here but for the most part most of these got sliced up like I wanted okay and there we go pretty much all of it's out of there going to unplug this so I don't hit that button on accident. I'm sure it won't like go off. It has a safety on it, but I'm going to unplug it. We're going to take the slicer out of here. Okay. All of this will go into my dishwasher. And that's the, the next stage on this recipe. And I'm going to get this put away. all right everyone i'm bringing you in to show you this concoction that i am making up and that's exactly what it is it's loosely based on a recipe that i'll put down below i'm using cream of potato soup in this recipe to make my sauce with one because i got it from the food bank 
and I need to use it up. So it's in here. We are going to add It's good. It's good. This is the milk that I got from the food bank a couple of weeks ago. And we're going to use some of this. Okay, about that much. I'd say about a cup and a half to two cups. And. I'm gonna leave this out because I might want some more, okay? We are creating this uh, au gratin using turnips rather than potatoes, but I'm using this potato soup up, cream of potato soup up, and it's going to be my the sauce that's going to go over the top, okay? And so we're going to add this in here. There we go. I'm going to keep adding things in there, okay, that I want to add in there. This does come from the recipe, the spices themselves. They said put a little nutmeg in there. And look, that nutmeg has never been used. Okay, it's the only nutmeg I have left. Um, I used up the other nutmeg that I had in my soups over the winter. And so, here we go. We're going to add, I'm going to put this lid back on there to prevent me from doing a lot of putting a, a whole bunch in there. Okay. But I like the flavor of nutmeg. Well. There we go. About that much. Okay. Enough to flavor, but not overpower. Then we're going to put This is my jar of thyme, and so we're going to put a little thyme in there, okay. And the thyme, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in my hand and crush it up in there, okay. And that's about all I want in there. Put the rest of it back in there. Because I don't want a lot. Of, I want the flavor in there, but I don't want it overpowered. So there we go. Just a little bit of time. Okay, we got the nutmeg. We got the thyme. Now, it called for... Oh, that smell of that thyme is getting to me. It called for white pepper. I don't have white pepper. So we are going to use black pepper. And salt. There's my black pepper. milk back up. And 
now we're going to mix this up. One more ingredient we're going to add. We're going to add a healthy serving of Parmesan cheese. Some of you are going to go, gross, this is the powder parmesan. It's what I got, people. Okay? This is about using what you have, adjusting a recipe. It did call for parm. Okay. The chunks you see in there are potatoes, okay? From that potato soup. It's not parmesan cheese. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spray my pan. This pan came from a viewer. It was a set that they sent me. So I'm going to... And I don't buy like the spray. Ooh, don't do that, Susie. I don't buy like the spray anymore. I fill my own jar up from now on. It's way cheaper to do that. And then I'm just going to take my little brush and make sure it's coated really well so it doesn't stick. Or we're going to try for it not to stick. Okay. <clears throat> And then, we're going to add a little bit more in the areas where I really don't want it, okay, to stick. And then, we're going to start layering. First layer <clears throat> is going to be the turnips. There's the first layer of turnips. Okay. Then remember the hams that I cut up several months back from um, a while back from Easter. This is the chunks of ham, and this is how I use these ham chunks. One of the ways is in casseroles like this, okay? Okay, we got that. That's half of this bag. Okay. Then, this is a uh, Two cups of um, cheese. I'm going to put some of this one in the center. Okay. And then we're going to pour half of this into here.
needle out. I can control it better with a ladle. And we're gonna come in here. And two scoops of this. It's gonna go over that. Then we're gonna come back in here. And the rest of these turnips are going in here. Because I want to use up all these turnips, okay? we go. Y'all can see I used up all the turnips. There we go. I don't know what that was, but it didn't belong in there. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to come in with the rest of this hand. We're going to come in with the rest of this soup. Pour it over the top. Then, I'm going to wash my hands and I'll be back. I need to go get me some aluminum foil and it's in the pantry, so I'll be back. Oh, this is what this looks like. Okay, so I layered it. All right, so now it is covered in aluminum foil, and this is going in the oven at 375 for an hour. I'm gonna keep eye on it as it cooks, and um, when it starts to get to the point where I know it's gonna be done real quick, then I'll take the um, aluminum foil off and let the cheese um, let the cheese brown up. Okay. All right, everyone. It has been an hour and 15 minutes that this has been in the oven. 
And so we are about to pull it out of the oven. I ha I've put it in for an hour, pulled it out, took the aluminum foil off of the top of it, and now I put it back in for 15 minutes. I'm going to turn the oven off and we're going to let this rest. You can see that's what she looks like coming out of the oven. Look at all that bubbly, cheesy sauce. I am looking forward to this, but I certainly do have to let it rest, okay? Here we go, everyone. We're going to give this a try. It looks just like potatoes au gratin. But it's made with a much healthier... Um, turnips. All right. And that creamy sauce, it looks good. Oh, this looks so good. Let me get the fork out here. Okay. Here we go. We're going to give it a try. I want a little of that ham and the turnips. It's still hot. I'm turning the camera around. All right, I'm back. We're gonna give this another try and I'm gonna give you my honest opinion, okay? Um, I am gonna tell you that it does taste good, okay? But you see? Mm. It's good. It's done, but not mushy. Mmm. This is really good. And it's much better for you. I'm impressed with this recipe. I will definitely put the recipe down below in the description. 